So today I've got a complete GPS extravaganza test between the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and the Garmin Epix Pro, as well as the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Garmin Venue 3. Now in this test, I'm gonna put them head to head against the streets of New York City. We're gonna dive down into the buildings to see how things go, but also put these watches through an entire gauntlet of different areas to see how well they hold up in real life. Back to the future. Man. Now I've done this GPS test in New York City a number of times to different models, but this will be the first time doing it with both the Ultra 2 as well as the Garmin Epix Pro, and also for that matter the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Venue 3. So let's get these watches started and I'll explain things as I go along. Now we're going to start here along the side of the water, but soon dive into the city across all the buildings. Uh, just starting here to see how things go from the very beginning. Right alongside the USS Intrepid. The aircraft carrier is now a museum, which is pretty cool, but even more interesting from a trivia standpoint is there is a British British Airways Concorde on top of that. And like two decades ago, there was a silly promotion where if you bought a bunch of magazines, you can get a trip on the Concorde using miles and points. I did that and that Concorde now sits on top of that aircraft carrier uh, in the back hangars there. I'll link to my blog post from way back then down below if you find that entertaining. Now starting off, we're going on the side here of Manhattan. However, it's not as easy as you think. Above my shoulder there has been this elevated overpass or highway of sorts. So that's kind of the starting point. Now we've effectively got two sets of GPS watches. On my right wrist here, we have multi-band watches. Uh, these are watches that have dual frequency GPS or GNSS that are basically the holy grail of GPS accuracy. And they're gonna be better dealing with stuff like this in the tall buildings. Yet on the other side, we have two sets of watches that don't have that. And they're gonna struggle in cases like this. So as you can see, I'm directly underneath this overpass right now, certainly blocking that GPS signal. Let's check the recorded data and see how it looks. Okay, starting off as we approach the underpass, very strong performance at this point. All of them are pretty much spot on. There's really no complaints. As we go under the edge of the underpass though, you see that the Apple Watch Series 9 kind of like hangs out to the left a little bit. It's not quite clear why. And then towards the end of this overpass, we see the Garmin Venue 3 does the opposite on the opposite side, though basically kind of cutting that entire corner right there. Still, this is pretty impressive for what these things are doing underneath an actual overpass this entire time. Okay, so leaving behind the overpass, I'm looking for 59th Street, but there's no marker down there, so we're gonna pop up and see if we find it. That's my uh, designated cut through over to Central Park. Oh, the stairs are brutal. Let's see what's up here. Okay, 66th. I overshot a little bit, but it'll be fine. With this, we are now into the start of the building section. It's gonna get way taller a little bit, but this is a good starting point. Now, some of you about now are saying, hey, this side's being disadvantaged because it's against the building. Don't worry, I'm gonna switch streets here in just a couple. So we're basically against the wall, equal amounts for both sides. Here we are on the left-hand side now, making it harder for these watches over here. The old American school bus. I live in Europe, so seeing like American school buses again is kinda a bit nostalgic. Also fun nostalgia is I did the uh, New York City Triathlon years ago and you have to run from the water all the way up to AC Central Park on the same rough stretch. Uh, a little more casual this time around. Okay, across the street into Central Park. That, that inspire the uh, horse and carriage there. Now this is where the rubber starts to meet the road a little bit. As each consecutive block comes along, the buildings actually get higher and higher. And you'll be able to see where I change which side of the road I'm on in just a second, but you'll notice it doesn't actually make any difference to accuracy from either the watches on either wrist, mostly because they were so good to begin with that it didn't really matter. They were all on the road. Now as we get beyond this, the buildings are even taller now, and you're starting to see the impact of that on the accuracy. You see the Venue 3 kind of wobbling quite a bit, uh, the Epix is wobbling a little bit, uh, even the Apple Watch Series 9 is wobbling in there. Nonetheless, for this entire section, they all stayed on the roadway, so that's nothing to complain about. Runner's rules, unofficial rules anyways, dictate that you have to run this this way. So I'm gonna go the way I always do, counterclockwise, make my run a little bit longer, but it's all good. And after this, we're gonna dive through Times Square. I like how the police convoy, which I assume is carrying a prisoner transfer of some sort based on that black van there, stopped for the red light. This is otherwise closed to vehicles. Like, there was no real reason to have to stop, but they did. Given all these red lights, I think I might beat them. Okay, so doing a quick little GPS check. Garmin Epix at eight kilometers. Apple Watch Ultra 2 at 7.93, 7.97 the Apple Watch Series 9, and 7.91 on the Garmin Venue 3. All within basically 100 meters of each other. But keep in mind that comparing the total distance of a run between devices is the worst way to do GPS accuracy testing because the device can undershoot, cut through a building, overshoot, end up somewhere else, and still have the same total distance. That's why instead we'll look at all the GPS tracks. So this is the worst part of the run, the hill. 
I live in Amsterdam. There are no hills. But my only goal in this section is always to simply beat the non-e-bikes. That's it. So far, I'm succeeding there. That's my goal. Thus, it's a win. Back down the other side of the hill, eventually back towards home or hotel. Okay, so now as we exit Central Park and head towards the gauntlet of GPS challenges, let's take a look at the accuracy up to this point. Okay, so looking at Central Park, you see that by and large, things are pretty much good across the board. There's no real issues here. Still, it's something that I include in every single time I do this test because I do want to look at how exactly these are. And if you look closely, what you'll notice is that all of these units are on the correct side of the road virtually the entire time on that little running path along the left-hand side of the road there. So very, very impressive there across the board from all those units, both the cheaper ones and the more expensive ones. Running groups getting ready for their evening runs here. Just about sunset time. I will definitely be getting some goodies at one of these stalls in just a minute here. Once I finish. Okay, now here comes the most challenging part of this particular course, which is straight down Broadway to Times Square. We give it the whirl as soon as we can. Oh, we got a green light. Let's roll. Now I'm gonna try to run kind of down the middle here. Uh, and there's basically no man's land. Not on the bike lane, not on the sidewalks, but roughly here. Keep things even for both sides. Now I'm definitely feeling a little bit of fatigue right now. It's uh almost one in the morning my time. I took a flight this morning from Amsterdam over, so eight hours of sitting on a jet plane. Definitely a little bit dehydrated, a little bit tired, but we are almost there. Whoa, check out this bus. This is crazy, holy cow. I also just noticed that low light performance kicking in now um, of the uh, GoPro. It's holding on, but not for much longer. Back to the Future, man, epic movie. Did not know there was a Broadway production for it as well. That's awesome. <laughs> Only in New York City. Only here. Okay, we have arrived in New York City, Times Square. Time to stop all these real quick and see what they look like. Okay, here comes the toughest section overall. And you can see, to begin with, all of them are basically on the road. Uh, right here, you know, the ones towards the left of the side where it's where I was running uh, versus the right-hand side. Uh, and they're all sort of holding together until this moment we've lost the Garmin Epix Pro somewhere off on the buildings. Uh, looking at the other side of the data, it's only about half a block off, so it is just not too far, but it's definitely not on the roadway there. Uh, and then right now, we've lost the Garmin Venue 3, the Apple Watch Series 9. The Apple Watch Ultra 2, though, is definitely sticking that landing and staying right where I ran the entire time. Time. Keeping in mind though that Apple does use Apple Maps data to kind of correlate this stuff and help increase accuracy, especially in cities. If we look at the overall distances, you'll see that the top three watches right there, not top three, but I guess they kind of are in this case, are all very, very close in distance versus the venue three at the bottom is a little bit further out. But again, as I mentioned earlier on, using just a distance measurement isn't the best idea because as you saw just for the last 30 seconds, those three watches were quite a bit different in terms of GPS tracks, yet had the same distances at the end of it. Okay, there you go, a complete look at GPS accuracy in both the top Garmin and Apple watches as well as the mid-range Garmin and Apple watches to see well it can hold up to New York City. If you did find this video interesting or useful, entertaining or something, just give it a like at the bottom. It really does help out the video and the channel quite a bit.